So when this video gets uploaded, most of us will spend coming up to like a month with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Oh my God, that has just flown by so fast. But we here today at Some Kind of Gaming wanted to discuss what is next for the Zelda franchise. Tears of the Kingdom is looking like it's going to be the highest selling Zelda of all time. And if it ain't that, then it is 100% Breath of the Wild. Are they gonna stick to this open world, beautiful, adventurous, do whatever you want style of gameplay? Because we do know that there is maybe a vocal minority, maybe an absolute butt ton of people who aren't huge fans of this style of Zelda. Party poopers. Mm. Okay, just attack them, Laura. That's I'm sorry, fine. maybe that's me. I'm also a huge fan of Ocarina of Time, so I 100% understand where you're coming from. So let's discuss. So Breath of the Wild completely changed up what it meant to be a Zelda game. Previously, it did have a very traditional sort of linear gameplay style. You had to do this thing to get this item or whatever so that you can then access the next point. Complete this puzzle to do the next puzzle. Yeah, it was a very linear gameplay design, but Breath of the Wild completely changed that and it gives you freedom to do like whatever you want or whenever you want. But of course, when things change a lot, some people don't like it. Some people don't like change, you know? Honestly, fair enough. I'm also scared of change, but Breath of the Wild is amazing. Tears of the Kingdom is even more amazing. And the bottom line is they have sold a ridiculous amount of units. Nintendo would be stupid to not continue on this open world train. But what does that mean for our traditionalists? What does it mean for those Ocarina of Time style games? Are they just going to be gone forever? Are they? Well, I think that all of the new installments of Zelda are going to follow the Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, open world gameplay, but there's a lot more Zelda games in the past that they can remake in the traditional way. You know, so I guess for a while, Nintendo can make new Zelda games in the Tears of the Kingdom style, remake old ones in the traditional style, and then everyone will be happy. But I think that the traditional Zelda fans might have to accept the fact that there's... I don't think there's going to be any more new entries in the traditional style. It is unfortunate because in the past we obviously had this divide between Nintendo handhelds and Nintendo consoles. The Switch has unified those two ideas. So previously we got these giant 3D adventures on the home consoles like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. And then on the handhelds, we got like slightly smaller ones. Top down. A Link Between Worlds, <laughs> more 2D kind of vibes. Now, as Laura said, option one, just remake all the old games. Minish Cap Man in the style of The Link's Awakening. Minish Cap is one of the most underrated Zelda games in my opinion. I would absolutely love to see a remake of that. There's also the obvious ones like Twilight Princess and another Wind Waker remake. This HD. Give us HD, yeah. not necessarily remakes, it's possible. Or in 20 years when it is time for a remake, maybe we just get those as traditionals. Mm. There is another option. Nintendo themselves have said they want to release a Zelda project every year. If Tears of the Kingdom is anything to go by, these big open world experiences take like years, six or seven. What do they fill the gaps with? The most smaller, more traditional projects. Possibly 2D, possibly 3D. Yeah. The traditionalists amongst us still have a little bit of hope to hang on to. There still might be some smaller in scope traditional Zeldas to fill out the gaps between big AAA budget open world experiences. Yeah. Okay, so we've established that open world is the way to go, right? Mm -hmm. Our Numa himself has actually said in an interview at... Game Informer. That that is going to be the case. It was confirmed that the open world style will be the future of the Zelda franchise. And honest, again, fair enough. It's sold the most, it's the most popular. You'd be stupid not to. But that does raise the question, what do you do next? Yeah, yeah, like, I know. Tears of the Kingdom 
is insane. So much freedom. The ultra hand mechanic, so much freedom to just build random crap and do whatever, oh man, it's just, I think how? How do you top that? I think that freedom is the bottom line. From what I gathered from the interview, he said that the 3D Zeldas like inspired a new form of Zelda game for a little bit, but it didn't allow them to give players as much freedom as they wanted to. I will say that Tears of the Kingdom is almost definitely the end of this Hyrule that we've been exploring throughout the Switch's life cycle. I agree. They have, people are already upset that they're reusing, even though they haven't, because it's way different, mm -hmm. the same map. At and least some of the assets and ideas of that map, let's, let's say that. They're not gonna do it again. No. There's, I don't think there's any way they can take this high roll. Yeah, something completely different. Maybe like an equivalent to like the Twilight Realm. I think they just have to build a whole new world. Just wait another 10,000 years, like have them save the day this time, wait 10,000 years, and then you can create like a whole new Yep. A new one. All It'll be like the Zelda games used to be, you know? Wind Waker has no influence on Twilight Princess. Yeah. Twilight Princess has no influence on Skyward Sword. Mm. It'll be like that. That'll just be a new Hyrule, a new world to explore. Mm -hmm. New mechanics, who knows what they'll be though. That's the biggest question. What mechanics do you put in there? I do have a theory. I think I have a theory about what kind of new mechanics okay. that they could put in the Go next on. Zelda game. So. When they were developing and making Breath of the Wild and trying to come up with the mechanics for that game, they were toying with the idea of employing some sort of minish cap mechanics. So in that game, you put a hat on and you turn really small, like into a minuscule little fairy, and it's a whole new world down there. They were toying with that idea in Breath of the Wild. So maybe and they will explore that further in the next Zelda game. And there are aspects of the Minish Cap, correct me if I'm wrong, whereas that, that small world then changes things in the, the large world. Yeah. Like you have to go out little cracks in buildings to yeah. get certain items. And, mm, yeah, they okay. all played into each other. And I think that that idea has a lot of potential. Take the Sky Islands and put them in Hyrule proper. Yeah. Not above, not below. In. So then you have like a whole new mechanic, which seems like a whole new world. Yeah. That's just like, that's just my theory. I like it. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's a great idea. I would love to see it too. You should pitch that to Nintendo. I should. <laughs> They should hire me, Nintendo, you know, if you need anyone else, I'm sure you've got stuff coming out of your ears, but what's one more? Now, the final thing that I have heard being brought up here and there, whispers on the wind, is that they're going to take this open world game plan of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and they're going to take you more linear areas from Ocarina of Time, you know, like the Gerudo Desert over there, temples. <laughs> Combine those two. So Hyrule Field from Ocarina of Time, for example, was this like open space you could run around with. There was like, mini games there with a Pona. It's basically just a means to an end of connecting all these little individual areas. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Let's have Hyrule Field be, be this huge world. open area, proper world, connecting these more linear segments mm. together i don't know how likely that is i feel like it's not very but hey if there's a way to keep everyone happy maybe it'll just keep no one happy at the end of the day maybe I then everyone will be unhappy because mm. <laughs> the traditionalists will be like it's not traditional enough and then the breath of the wildest will be like it's not open enough ah. you can't really make everyone happy can you but you just have to go with what is doing best for the franchise itself right the open world is what is best for the franchise mm. at least right now until something new and different comes along and i think it's just what we need to accept and if you don't love it already learn to love for the next geez at least two decades embrace the change so make sure you let us know in the comments what style of zelda is your favorite Hey, what's your favorite game? Because that will tell you a lot about what your favorite style of Zelda is. Do you prefer the open world or do you prefer the more traditional 
more linear game design of the past? It is really a tough question, isn't it? I think that Majora's Mask and Tears of the Kingdom are both S tier, not just Zelda games, but games in general. So mm -hmm. I'm not unhappy with anything that this franchise does. That's right. Take it anywhere you want. And honestly, I think I'll be more than happy. I'll be happy. I trust way. you. That's just right. do your thing. Well, if you haven't subscribed or liked the video already, maybe consider it, especially if you like Zelda because we love Zelda and we talk about Zelda all the time. Are we Zelda tubers? Well, really, it's kind of like looking that way. We, we're it? starting to become Zelda tubers. Aren't we? <laughs> We've just entirely obsessed. My entire existence is Zelda right now. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Boys. I'm having fun in my jack of chair, navigating up 